So if we think of traditional surgery, it involves uh, making an incision so that a surgeon can get a good look inside the body and figure out what's wrong and fix it. Um, and then that evolved uh, into some more minimally invasive surgical procedures uh, where they use cameras so they can make smaller incisions and put cameras inside your body and use the camera to guide smaller instruments to, again, achieve the same purpose, find out what's wrong and, and fix it. Interventional radiology takes that a step further using radiology equipment or imaging equipment to guide minimally invasive procedures. So we're doing almost all our procedures through a tiny nick in the skin, which allows us access to a part of your body, whether it be to an artery or to a vein or kidney or the liver or, or anywhere else. Um, and then we use these types of machines to guide the actual procedure. And ultimately the main benefit to all those things is that patients recover faster and often with less of a risk of complications. And so we like to think of interventional radiology as being hard on diseases, for instance, hard on cancer, but easy on patients. We're gonna take you on a tour today of our new interventional radiology center at the Halifax Infirmary on the third floor. After registering at the x-ray registration desks, you are gonna walk 30 feet down the hall to our interventional radiology center. Your first stop is coming into our change room um, where you're going to get changed and you can store your valuables and things in some uh, lockers that we have installed here. And then uh, one of our IR nurses is going to come out and bring you into our pre and post recovery area. And that's a big part of this project was creating an 11 space recovery area so that our patients, our outpatients aren't traveling all over the hospital. This is where you're going to be before your procedure, where our nurses are gonna get you prepared for your procedure, uh, start an IV if you need it. Uh, once our procedure room is ready for you, then you're just gonna immediately move across the hallway into one of our four new procedure rooms. There's an incredible range of procedures that we do, and that's why we really talk about interventional radiology as being one of the few specialties in medicine that's really truly head to toe. Um, so if we start at the head, our interventional neuroradiologists, um, they do procedures uh, on patients with acute stroke. One of the types of strokes is that a blood clot has traveled up, typically from your heart, and gone and caused a blockage in one of the arteries in your brain. Then they can go up again from the artery in your groin with a little catheter and go up and suck that clot out and restore the blood flow to your brain and potentially leave that patient uh, fully recovered from their stroke. So if you're a diabetic patient with bad circulation and maybe you develop an ulcer or a wound on your foot that will not heal, uh, and you're facing an amputation of your foot, then we can go in the artery at your leg, map out all the arteries uh, down to your foot, and if there's a narrowing or a blockage, we can pass little wires, and over those little wires, pass a little balloon and stretch open the narrowing or blockage and reestablish the blood flow to that area in your foot and allow that ulcer to heal and prevent an amputation. Another example, um, a patient uh, who's in a car accident, they come into the emergency department and you know they can't keep their blood pressure up and they get a CAT scan and they see that their spleen has been uh, smashed and they're bleeding from their spleen. Those patients are often referred to interventional radiology and we again go in through the artery at, uh, at the patient's groin go out into the artery to their spleen and put a, a plug in that artery um, to stop the bleeding. By doing that, typically we can save the patient's spleen uh, instead of them going to the operating room and having their spleen taken out um, because we recognize now that your spleen is actually pretty important to you for fighting, uh, helping fight off uh, infections. So, uh, so it's a way of keeping that patient from bleeding to death but also uh, often saving their spleen. This particular equipment, this is called uh, a, an angiography unit. It uses x-ray, 
to allow us to see through you or see inside of you uh, and see our little devices as they track up an artery or a vein and, and it allows us to then introduce all kinds of other tools like balloons and stents and things like that. A, a mobile C-arm is just, it's a piece of x-ray equipment and it allows us to do basic interventional radiology procedures. We put in a lot of specialized uh, or specialty intravenous uh, catheters which are little tubes that go into veins uh, and allow people to get you know, six weeks of antibiotics if they've got a particular type of infection. A lot of cancer patients get in chemotherapy, need to get specialized IVs um, in order to get their chemotherapy. Some of the other equipment we use in interventional radiology, we'd use ultrasound. Ultrasound's really good at looking inside of you and CAT scan, same thing, we can use CAT scan, which gives us really exquisite detail of the inside of the body. We know you've got a small tumor in your kidney. Interventional radiology then can use CT fluoroscopy. We can step on a pedal and get an instant image uh, of that tumor and we can guide a needle just through a little nick in the skin directly into the tumor and then kill it with heat. CT fluoroscopy is critical in the diagnosis and treatment of patients for can with cancer. And so working through the foundation, uh, we're able to purchase a, a CT fluoro unit. It's made those procedures much safer because we can see exactly where the needle's going and we can avoid that artery and that vein and get it just to where we want it to go. Um, but it also allows us to do it really quickly. And so the patients having that procedure in a very short period of time, and the shorter a procedure you can make a procedure, the easier it is on a patient uh, and the less risk of complications. Our goal in this project was to make things better for patients. We approached it from the patient perspective and said, what could, what could we do differently to make life better for you, like to make your, your experience here better? And we took that feedback to heart and we enlisted our entire team for ideas about how to design the space, how we can most efficiently use the space. And the principal commitment we made to our hospital administration was we're completely rethinking how we do our work uh, and to do it better. So if we look at where, where we were, so where we were is we had two interventional radiology suites up uh, up in the OR environment. Through this project, we've now created four interventional radiology suites, so we've doubled the number of, of rooms to do procedures in, and we've created an 11 space recovery, pre and post recovery area for patients to come and go from uh, in order to have their procedures. With the help of the QE2 Foundation, we can equip that third and fourth room to really actually have four, the actual doubling of our capacity, uh, our room capacity, uh, and allow us to increase the number of procedures that we can do, which will you know, shorten the wait times in order to get in for an interventional radiology procedure, but also allow us to, to, to do more. In 2012, we did uh, about 4,000 procedures a year. Um, this year we're on track for about uh, 6,300 procedures. Everything we do, we do as a team. And, and every member of that team is just as valuable as another. So yes, we have our interventional radiologists and our interventional neuroradiologists uh, who actually perform the procedures. Um, we have our interventional radiology technologists who, who run our equipment. It's incredibly complex imaging equipment so that allow us to, to do our procedures. We have our dedicated interventional radiology nurses um, who look after our patients and uh, make sure they're comfortable through our procedures and assist us in the procedures. We have over a million dollars worth of inventory that consists of hundreds of different types of pieces of specialty equipment and we have our, uh, our IR inventory team who uh, do an incredible job tracking all that inventory and making sure we always have what we need when we need it. 
We have uh, our clerical um, or imaging attendants who are in contact with our patients and making sure they know what to do in order to prepare for the procedure and do all our scheduling and keep the show running smoothly. And we have an incredible team of porters who make sure we get our patients here on time and, and work efficiently that way. And last but not least, we have the, the world's greatest IR manager in Vicky Sarando, who, who not only is tasked with keeping us all in line and making sure we can do the things we do, but also oversaw this entire uh, renovation project. And without her, uh, none of this would have been possible. Every part of our team is, uh, is valued and, and critical to uh, allow us to do the great things that we do. So when COVID hit in March, um, just like everywhere else in the healthcare system, um, there was in, it was the fear of the unknown and uh, things slowed way down. The first thing we did to try and address what was going on was we created what we jokingly referred to as our IR COVID Preparedness Task Force. That was a, a group of four individuals, two physicians and two nurses, and their job was to stay on top of all the changing guidelines and, and procedures related to dealing with patients with potential COVID and educating the rest of the team. We very quickly were very comfortable with how we were gonna deal with potential COVID patients. What that in turn allowed was we very quickly ramped right back up to dealing with all our patients. And so that's why this year we're going to match the number of procedures we did last year despite COVID. One other sort of unique thing that we did as part of COVID was uh, our task force immediately separated us into two separate teams. And those teams worked together um, up until uh, July. There was no intermixing of the teams. Even on call, we only did call uh, as separate team members. And what that meant was if one person on a team had become infected with COVID unknowingly and infected somebody, other members of the team, we had all the precautions and systems in place to, to deal with it. In terms of what we talk about, a multidisciplinary approach to patient care, that's using multiple different, uh, getting the input of multiple different physician groups um, in deciding what's the best care uh, uh, for a patient. And I'll use as an example, the patient who gets diagnosed with a, a primary liver tumor or a liver cancer. Every Monday, we have a multidisciplinary conference where we discuss those patients. And that conference is attended by uh, our liver and transplant surgeons, um, medical oncologists, uh, radiation oncologists, hepatologists or liver specialists, diagnostic radiologists who specialize in the interpretation of all the fancy imaging that we do, and interventional radiologists. And what we do in that conference is we, we discuss the patient and we come up with what is the best treatment option for that patient. It's really that multidisciplinary approach that uh, benefits the patient the most because we can ensure that each and every time the patient gets the most appropriate care.